automation, QA engineers, and aesthetes. So for developer engineers and test play a crucial role in ensuring that software functions as expected and works efficiently. Today, we're gonna walk through a self-taught guide to learning both skill sets. Meaning, you can learn both of these for free. I don't want any excuses for why you can't learn them now. And this is coming from somebody who sells courses and partners with boot camps all the time. Courses and boot camps are there to help you and to make the learning process more efficient. But if you don't have the means or finances for a course or a boot camp, you can still learn it on your own. So I don't want any excuses for why you can't learn it. And if anybody tells you that you must buy their course or you must go to their boot camp because it's the only way to learn it, they're misleading you and lying to you and you probably should stay away from them. Now that all that is out of the way, let's jump into the video. I previously made a guide for self-taught manual QA engineers that you can watch after this. And I will leave linked in the comment section below. If you're new here, my name is The Test Lead. And I make content to help you on your software testing journey. Today's topic, a guide and crash course for automation QA engineers and aesthetes. Let's get started. First off, we probably should define the roles of an automation QA engineer and aesthetes. High level, they're pretty much the same. Most companies and job descriptions will use them interchangeably. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna touch the slight differences. In both roles, you're creating and running automated test scripts. You wanna automate anything that's redundant in the testing process, including things like regression testing. Instead of having your manual QA engineer run all the regression tests after each testing cycle, automate it. Create some automated test scripts, that way you press a button and get the results. The slight differences between an automation QA engineer and an aesthetic or a software developer engineer in test is in the title. For aesthetes, the team sees you as more of a software developer who happens to specialize in testing. So with that role, they expect you to have more coding and technical knowledge. You're gonna create custom tools and frameworks to help with the testing process. So just how the regular developers on your team are developing and writing their code, they're gonna see you in the same way. We are developing and writing code, but happens just to be for testing. Now that we define the roles, let's talk about the actual guide and crash course part. Before you jump into any automation, you should first learn the manual or human QA engineer skill set. Like I said, I have a video covering that that I'll link below. But you should understand the core principles. The software development life cycle. Understand the different stages of software development from planning and design to implementation and maintenance. Learn about models such as Agile, Waterfall, and DevOps which impact how testing is integrated into the development process. Testing documentation. Test plans. These are documents that outline the scope, approach, resources, and schedule for testing activities. Test cases. Detailed descriptions of test scenarios, including the test inputs, execution steps, and expected outcomes. Bug reports, records of defects found during testing, including steps to reproduce the issue, 
severity, and screenshots or logs if available. Types of testing, functional testing, ensures that software functions as expected based on requirements. Regression testing, checks that new changes haven't introduced new bugs and previously tested features. Exploratory testing involves exploring the application to identify defects that may not be covered by predefined test cases. So all of that is prerequisites for learning the automated part of testing. Don't just skip to coding and automation, no. Make sure your fundamental knowledge of software testing is intact first. Once you have a good understanding of all of that, next, you're gonna pick your coding language. Coding skills are essential for writing automated tests and scripts. Choosing the right language allows you to leverage various testing frameworks and tools effectively. The most popular choices are Python, Java, and JavaScript. Python is known for simplicity and readability. Java, widely used in enterprise environments for powerful testing frameworks, and JavaScript, ideal for web applications. Personally, I suggest Python. It's the easiest to learn and it's very versatile. Next, you're gonna choose your IDE or the place where you're gonna write your code. Then run your program. The program is then changed into computer language. That way, your computer understands what you're trying to do. So we have PyCharm, which is specifically designed for Python development. IntelliJ is for Java and Visual Studio Code. It's a lightweight, versatile IDE that supports various programming languages. So now you have your coding language and your IDE where you're writing your code at. Next, you have to learn a testing tool and framework. So there's two sides to testing. We have the front end or the UI or the customer sees. We then have the back end, which involves API testing. First, let's talk about the front end, UI testing, or testing what the customer sees when they access your website or application. Some popular UI testing tools include Selenium, which has been around forever, Cypress, and Playwright. To start, I'll probably focus on Selenium because it's the most commonly used in different companies and industries. The other two are newer, and some companies do use it, but it's just less companies that have that option. Next, we have mobile application testing. So any application on your phone can be tested with mobile testing tools and frameworks. Example tools and frameworks for mobile testing include Appium and Expresso. Appium is the one that I will go with because it's the most well-known one and you can test both Android and iOS mobile applications. Mobile testing is not a requirement, more of an extra. Usually we focus more on the front end UI testing and the back end API testing. So it won't hurt to learn, but just don't prioritize it before the other two. Quick break. If you need help on your software testing journey, check out my website, thetestinglead.com. There, I have content and other information to help you on your software testing journey. Now, back to the video. Now we have automated API testing. Remember, APIs are a way for two different programs to communicate with each other and I share information. Postman is a free tool. You can go to their website, create a free account, and start testing APIs today. It's very user-friendly. You can also create things like test for APIs in Postman. So first, 
learn about Postman, and test their practice APIs. Then we're going to talk about actually automating API testing, where you're testing APIs in your code. For Python, here's an example. We're going to import test API, then do a get request for some example API. We're then asserting the status code. You'll use Python's request library to make HTTP request and validate the API responses. Next, we have JavaScript. With JavaScript, you can use Axios for making the request. Next, we have databases and SQL. Databases are a place for your company to store information. It could be customer data, it could be product information, and so on. This information is compartmentalized into storage units called tables. That way, it's more organized and easily accessible. We then interact with this data by using SQL. Use SQL commands like select to retrieve data and insert, update, and delete to modify data. Here's an example. Select star from users where ID is one. This retrieves user data with a specific ID equal to one. So another optional one along with mobile testing is performance testing. Neither one is a requirement, but is a good add-on for your resume and your skill set. Performance testing assesses how well your application performs under various conditions, helping to identify bottlenecks and ensuring that the application meets performance requirements. The top two tools for performance testing are JMeter and LoadRunner. Let's talk about practicing and building your portfolio. Once you have basic knowledge and understanding of everything we previously discussed. Make sure you actually get repetitions practicing it. Writing code for API testing or for UI testing using Selenium. Create your own repositories locally and actually run these tests. Then once you're confident with it, start to create your portfolio. That way you can showcase what you know to potential employees or your friends, if they like that type of stuff. A well-documented portfolio shows your ability to apply what you've learned and provides evidence of your expertise. How to practice. Create personal projects. Work on your own testing projects to apply your knowledge and skills in real-world contexts. Showcase these projects. Include detailed examples of your test cases, test scripts, and automation frameworks. Create your own personal website to showcase all your portfolio information. Create screenshots of your test cases and your test scripts, and even leave a link to your GitHub account. That way you can store all your code for your test scripts in a central place. Link this portfolio in your GitHub account to your resume and LinkedIn profiles. Next, join some QA communities. I know I've mentioned this in a previous video, but the more emerged you are in a QA space, the easier it is to network and to find other people who are like-minded. Try to find communities on LinkedIn, Reddit, other places, Twitter, wherever you can to reach out and talk to people in the space. One of my goals is to create a central place for people in the QA space to connect. But that's still in the making, maybe sometime next year. Everybody's favorite part, creating your resume and applying to jobs. A well-crafted resume highlights your skills and experience, making you stand out to potential employers. Applying for jobs 
is the final step in launching your career in automation testing and SDET roles. When creating your resume, make sure you're highlighting your skills. Now for applying to jobs. Tell your resume to job descriptions. If they're asking for specific tools and frameworks and coding languages, make sure those are in the beginning of your resume so they see you're a fit right away. Also, whenever required, have a cover letter. A lot of people skip this part, missing out on opportunities. So you should take advantage of that. And you apply for those positions. Seek entry-level roles or internships. You may have to even get a manual QA engineer role and then transition in that company to an automated one. Because sometimes the job market is hard. So instead of you being jobless, at least make some money and get some real experience and then transition to the automated or that's that role from there. But that's why having the core manual skill set is still required. Because honestly, you might be a hybrid doing both manual and automated testing. If you're struggling to gain experience, you can seek freelance work, you can volunteer, once again, try to get internships. The hardest thing is getting that initial experience. So try to get it any way possible. Because once you have experience, get that next job, it's a lot easier. From there, just continue to build your resume and portfolio. If this video was helpful, next you should check out my guide to being a manual QA engineer or my library here about automation.